And we are back on Sportsman Radio. I'm your host, Chris Shanafelt, and I am now joined by former NFL tight end, Jermaine Wiggins. Thanks for joining the show today, uh, Jermaine. How's it going? I'm doing well. How are you doing? I'm doing great, man. I'm doing great. And I want to start this interview off by talking a little bit about your college days. I see you attended Marshall University for two years and then transferred to the University of Georgia. Uh, what made you want to make that change? Well, it was real simple for me. My head coach at the time, Jim Donner, was, um, you know, he was head coach at Marshall, and then he got the head coaching job at the University of Georgia, and basically said, you know, hey, if you're interested, you know, you should think about um, transferring that down to Georgia, and, you know, anybody who, you know, follows or knows, knows college football or just knows football in general knows, you know, the type of uh, program that the University of Georgia has, and, you know, that you know, and, and has had, so basically you can't pass up an opportunity, you know, to, to play at a school at that level of that magnitude, and that's basically what happened. All right, now I'm a senior in high school, and I won't be going to Marshall or Georgia, but I'll be attending Columbia College, Chicago. I'm, I'm, extremely, I'm extremely excited for, you know, my next journey in life. Uh, can you tell us, you know, how your overall experience was at college, like in college? Okay. Yeah, I'll tell you what, it was, a, it was a great experience for me, obviously, um, you know, I got to play sports there, and, you know, that was a great experience, but the biggest thing for me was I got to meet a lot of people, and, it, you know, and, it, and in life nowadays, it's not what you know, it's who you know, and when you go to school and you go to college, you're able to open up yourself to so many different people from so many different walks of life, and uh, you never know who you're running into when you're, you're building your networks and some of your, your college you know, friends are going to be friends for the rest of your life. So, you know, it was a great experience in that way as far as meeting people and just basically, you know, getting to know people and building great friendships and relationships uh, that I still, you know, to this day, are in communication with a lot of my college um, friends. So it's, it's just, it opens you up to so many different things. Jermaine, you went undrafted in the 1999 NFL draft. Were you expecting to be drafted? Well, I thought I could possibly sneak into the seventh round. Um, you know, it wasn't something that I had high hopes of. I thought, you know, maybe I could sneak in, and if I did, great. But if not, I was just really looking for an opportunity uh, for somebody to give me a shot in training camp. And basically, that's what the Jets did. They they, they gave me an opportunity, Bill Parcells and that co- his coaching staff, to, to come in and, and be a guy that would have an opportunity. Uh, and, you know, I took advantage of that opportunity and was able to put together a great career, but as far as getting drafted, I thought maybe I could sneak in. I wasn't disappointed when I didn't get drafted. Um, you know, my hopes weren't super high on getting drafted, so I was just happy to get an opportunity. At the end of the day, I think that's the most important thing, um, is getting the opportunity. If you can get drafted, it's great, but if not, you know, as long as you can get an opportunity to go out there and basically, you know, prove to everybody you can play, I think that's the most important thing. And you did get an opportunity. Like you said, you did end up getting a shot in the NFL with the New York Jets. Uh, was signing that first NFL contract of yours like a dream come true? Uh, yeah, it was. I mean, you know, there wasn't wasn't like there was a bunch of money on it. Uh, basically, there was no money on it. So for me, it was just an opportunity to 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 have a chance to make this team um, and to to kind of you know it wasn't even like a dream of mine. So I can't even say live out my dream because I never had expectations about playing in the NFL. But you know, when I had the opportunity to sign the contract, it was like okay, now I can basically you know. Live out a dream that I never expected. You know, live out an opportunity I never expected, and um, you know that was a great feeling for me. Uh, it was a great feeling for my family, and you know. And but I knew at the end of the day it was just me signing my name to a piece of paper. So I had to go out there and prove that I deserved to play and I could play, and um, and that's what I had to do. So, but yeah, it was a great feeling to basically sign that contract. Was there ever that moment when, you know, something happened unexpectedly and you told yourself, wow, okay, I'm really in the NFL? Were, were there, was there any times that, you know, that you experienced that were like that? Well, I think that the, the experience for me was, I wasn't really super starstruck. As a kid growing up, I was a big fan of sports, so, you know, I knew a lot of players, and, you know, I, I grew up in an area where, um, in Boston, I, you know, Mark Bavaro was from around here, and so, for me, I remember always what, being a, uh, a fan of sports, so when I walked into the locker room, you know, there were guys that I knew from just being a fan, um, Keyshawn Johnson, Vinny Testaverde, so I really wasn't starstruck. For me, the moment 
when I basically was like, wow, I'm here and this is, uh, you know, this is real is when the first meeting, we had our first meeting and Bill, Bill Parcells walked out and basically said, okay, this is the first day off season and, and welcome. And that was really when I really looked, you know, realized, well, Man, I'm, I'm, I'm really here, you know, because I'm looking at a guy that I knew, you know, I knew about from, you know, being a Patriots fan in 96, you know, taking the Patriots to the Super Bowl, knowing what he did for the Giants, and just to see his presence was really when I knew, okay, I, I was here, and now I got to prove and show everybody that I deserve, I deserve to stay here. Were there any veterans on that Jets team that, that would make you or any of the other rookies do anything like carry helmets and pads or give you guys a bad haircut like they do to rookies nowadays? Oh, yeah. Well, I had to do all that. I did all that stuff. Um, for me, I was, a, I was a guy who played the tight end and H-back position, so uh, I basically got it from many different angles. Um, you know, Keyshawn was a guy. Wayne Corbett was was next to mine. Eric Green, who used to play for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Keith Byers, Vinny. I was basically in an area, um, one of those guys that, you know, I had to make sure I go got I got the donuts and I got the bagels and you know I got the chicken before they left. So it was you know I was having a lot of shoulder press, but you know what? Hey, that's what you have to do. You have to earn your stripes, and um, I had no problem with it. You know, for me, hey, this is I wanted to show that I deserve to be here, and I knew how things went. I was just a young buck trying to make it, and you know I was there to to basically get any type of insight I could from the veteran guys, and if that meant you know carry carry their pads. Hey, no problem with it. That's just the way it works. Now, Jermaine, what would happen if you were to bring in, you know, the cheap bagels and donuts? <laughs> well, well, I, I would have to worry about that because everybody had specific orders for what they wanted. So it wasn't like I had to spend my money. They gave me the money and they gave me a list. So all it was was basically making sure that, you know, you didn't screw up the list and you didn't uh, mess up anybody's order. So, you know, I didn't have to worry about getting any cheap donuts because they knew exactly what they wanted. You guys are listening to Sportsman Radio. I'm your host, Chris Shanfeld, talking with former NFL tight end Jermaine Wiggins. Jermaine, you went on to play a little over a full season with the Jets, and then you were released and picked up by a division rival of theirs. And they were a team that you actually grew up watching, like you said, in the New England Patriots. How excited were you to join the Pats? Well, you know what? I was extremely excited. I was excited when I joined the Pats, but I was disappointed when the they, um, when the Jets let me go because I felt like, you know, hey, I, 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 was, I was playing. I was a third tight end. I was on a lot of special teams. And, you know, you never want to get cut. So, but, you know, when the Patriots did pick me up, I was extremely excited. Uh, you know, I was excited for the fact that, you know, I'm going to get another opportunity to continue playing. And then and I was excited for the fact that I was going to get an opportunity to play for the team that I grew up watching as a kid and, and, and basically, you know, my hometown. So I was excited for, for that. Um, but, you know, it, it's all, like I said, at the end of the day, it's all about opportunities. If, if you're given an opportunity, you want to try to take advantage of it. And uh, Patriots gave me that opportunity. And I try to take advantage of it the best way I could. And, um, you know, it, uh, it ended up turning out for me. It ended up turning out to be the best move ever for <laughs> the Jets Cup, maybe because not too long after that, we ended up going to a Super Bowl and winning it. And, and let's talk about that 2001-2002 NFL season as you guys finished 11-5, and and you, Jermaine Wiggins, made some huge plays in the playoffs, including the 10-catch, 68-yard performance in the AFC Divisional Round overtime victory against the Raiders. Can you tell us about the journey yourself and the Patriots team had to go on to make it to Super Bowl thirty six? You know what, it was, a, uh, it was a good year as far as for us as a team, but I mean, everybody knows what happened in 2001 as far as, you know, the, the horrific acts, and you know, that was one of those seasons where there was, you know, for us, Joe Andrews, he was a guy that, you know, he had some relatives that were uh, New York Fire Department um, firefighters and whatnot, so, you know, when everything transpired with 9-11, it was just, you know, one of those things where not only as a team did we come together, but, you know, it was like America was coming together, and, you know, you had, uh, um, you know, you kind of had a direct connection because you knew Joe Andrews, and he had family members that were basically, you know, were, were New York firefighters, and, you, you know, so you could almost touch it a little bit, um, but just as a team, you know, it was a good year for us, and we put together, uh, a nice little run. I mean, I think midway to week 10, we were 5-5, five and five and um, we basically 
you know, felt like we could, you know, make a nice little run. And after week 10, we lost to the Rams on, I think it was a Sunday night game. And we went on to win, you know, the next nine straight, which ultimately ended up being, win number nine ultimately ended up being a Super Bowl victory. But, um, you know, you look at it like, it was a team that we, we just were a bunch of guys. Nobody expected us to do much of anything. We played together. We played for each other. Everybody knew their role and, and did their job. And it turned out, it turned out to be a great season, uh, you know, for, for everybody and for the Patriots organization. And what was it like to prepare for the biggest game in the world, knowing that everybody will be watching the two teams playing in that game, the New England Patriots and the uh, St. Louis Rams? Well, you know, it, we try to look at it as just being another game, but it, you know, it's hard to really do that when you got all this media and you got it, you got all this. It's like dog and pony show, and you're having to do a million different things for uh, 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 media, and just you know, you see all these different people, and you, you, you but you try your best to, to look at it as just another game, but you also we know at the end of the day, it's not. Um, so preparation was basically, hey, we're going to go out there. We know what type of team we're, we're facing in the St. Louis Rams. We, we know that they're a very talented team. Uh, we know they can do a lot of different things. But, but Coach Belichick and the rest of the staff, they did a tremendous job of preparing us and making sure that we were focused and, and we were going to go out there and perform at the highest level. And we were going to go out there and, and, and play the type of football that we knew we could play. And basically that's how we prepared. You know, was, hey, if we go out there and we do our jobs, we'll be all right. We, you know, we felt like we, we were the more physical team. We felt like we could go out there and hit them in the mouth. And, you know, it was a great game plan they put together, and that's kind of what we did. And you would play a key part in the Super Bowl victory uh, over the Rams. You made a clutch seven-yard catch, and uh, Adam Vinatieri would kick the game-winning field goal. Congratulations on that, Jermaine. It, is, it really is just a great story, you know, growing up in New England and then winning a Super Bowl with the New England Patriots. You are a part of that New England Patriots Super Bowl 36 winning team. What does that achievement mean to you? Uh, you know, imagine that, right? A kid growing up in East Boston catches the, the pass right before Vinatieri yeah. kicks the field. I mean, I, I couldn't have wrote it any better for a script for a movie. But, you know, I always look at it like this. You know, that was my job when my number was called. And I it went back to when I first got the opportunity in the NFL. Anytime I got an opportunity, I was going to take advantage of that. And, and if, you know, when my number got called and I knew I had a really good chance of catching this football, um, I basically said, you know what, I'm going to do my job, I'm going to catch it. I really wasn't thinking about what it meant at the time. I felt like Vinatieri probably could have kicked it from 60. Uh, but I just said, you know what, hey, if I can help out and get a few more yards, make the field go a little bit easier, then I'll do what I need to do. But um, you don't really think about, you know, what it means during the moment. It's kind of after the moment when you start to reflect. Um, and, you know, I looked at it like that was what I was supposed to do. You know, they called my number, I had an opportunity, and I was going to take advantage of it. And so, you know, it's great to kind of go back now, now that I'm kind of retired and I walked away from the game. And, you know, it's something that I can always look back on and say, uh, can you believe it? <laughs> so it's one of those things that is surreal. You would also go on to play with the Colts, Jaguars, Panthers, Vikings, and even in the UFL with the Florida Tuskers. Looking um, back, how would you describe your football career? Um, I would look at it like it was a great career. It was a bunch of one-year scholarships. <laughs> Having to prove myself year in and year out. But you know what? Um, I I wouldn't trade it in for the world. I guess it made me the player that I became. Um, I was an undrafted guy who played, who started in two Super Bowls, who contributed two Super Bowls. You know, unfortunately, I was only able to win one of them. But hey, some guys don't even win one. Some guys don't go to any. So, um, you know, I was I was fortunate enough to play it too. I was fortunate enough to set records at the NFL level um, and have a really good career. Like I said, at the end of the day, you know, as a kid from East Boston who had no aspirations about playing in the NFL and, you know, made a pretty good name for himself when a lot of people looked at me as not being the prototypical tight end and going out there and, and, and you know, making a little noise. So it was a good career for me. Now, how do you think you would perform in the NFL today? I know it wasn't too long ago since you were uh, in the pads, but the tight end position has changed significantly, wouldn't you say? Um, I would think I would do very well because, um, 
you know, when you look at a team that's throwing the ball a lot more, uh, that's one of the things that I specialized in. I, I could catch anything. I could get open. I could run good routes. I had a good feel for things. So, uh, you know, I look at it. If I was playing today, I probably would have been. I probably would be making a lot more money than I ever made when I did play. Uh, but you know what? That's just the way. To, that's just the way to uh, you know. Life works. You, you play the hand you dealt. I, I played at a time that was a little bit different, and you know, I, you know, I learned a lot. And, uh, you know, and I, you know, hopefully, you know, guys laid the path before me, and hopefully, I laid a little path for guys to come after me. Jermaine, I really appreciate your time today. I have just a few quick, fun questions for you. Then I'll let you go. Does that sound good? That yeah, sounds good. All right. What is your favorite TV show and movie? My favorite TV show. My favorite TV show, I am going to have to say, uh, it's a tough one right there, I, uh, I would have to say, maybe Real Housewives of Atlanta, <laughs> go figure. <laughs> oh, but, and, my, and my favorite movie, I say my favorite movie is Training Day, hmm. uh, Denzel Washington. Favorite thing to eat? Uh, my favorite thing to eat is uh, chicken palm sub. Except for football, what is your favorite sport? Um, it would be, my favorite sport would be uh, ice hockey. Alright, if you could meet any famous person, who would that be? Wow, if I could meet any famous person, who would that be? Uh, that's a good question. I would probably say, hmm, that is a really good question. Uh, wow, that's a good question. I could meet any famous person. I, I have a, I have a long list, but I'd like to meet Bob Ewell. All right, and I know you're on Twitter, at JWiggs85. As we know, if it wasn't for the magic of social media, you wouldn't be on the show right now. Why do you make it important to connect with your fans? Um, I, I, I look at it like this, you know. I just feel like, you know, social media is a great way to connect with people. If somebody, you know... Tweets at me, I, you know, I, I, don't, I feel like, you know what, I don't mind answering because I was a fan and I would hope that, you know, you know, my favorite athlete would have did it for me if there was social media back in the day. If I were to send Larry Bird a tweet, I would hope that he would, you know, hit me back up. But um, I, I just look at it that way. I was, I, I was blessed to be able to play professional sports and, you know, be a professional athlete. And, you know, I'm a fan. I got kids that are fans and, you know, I, I would, I would want, those professional athletes to, to, to basically do the things that I'm doing for, 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 you know, people that might be fans of mine. So basically that's why I do it because, you know, I want somebody to do it for me. Well, we appreciate it, Jermaine. And last but not least, what is something about Jermaine Wiggins that many people don't know? Um, I, I, many people don't know that I am, real, I am really, really a very good ice hockey player. All right, all right. Now I'm a now I'm a fan of the Chicago Blackhawks. Do you think we can get you out here in Chicago and play for the Blackhawks? <laughs> I don't know if I can play for the Blackhawks, but I can definitely skate with the guys. Like in you know, like a, a, a pickup situation, or you know, in a you know, a men's league or something like that. That's I play. Hey, sounds good, Jermaine. All right, guys. Uh, I'm sorry, Jermaine. I really appreciate your time today, man. It really was a true honor. Before we let you go, is there anything you'd like to plug on the air for myself and our listeners? Uh, just, you know, follow me, jwiggs 85 um, on Twitter. You go to my website, jermainwiggins.com, and, you know, my new uh, company I work for, Sports Money, helping professional athletes, um, you know, financially, basically, to, to not make mistakes that a lot of guys have made before them. So you can find us at support money, sportsmoney.com. All right, sounds good. Hey, Jermaine, hopefully we could have you on, you know, uh, talk some New England Patriots, maybe some Boston Celtics later on in the future as well. Sounds like a uh, player. We might, maybe we'll talk uh, Bruins Blackhawks in the Stanley Cup. Oh, that'd be great, man. That'd be great. All right, take care. All right, take care, man. Yep.